Phoenixville's first known railroad station was completed around 1833 at the site of the present-day Columbia Station. The station as we know it today was completed in 1864 during the Civil War. Since its inception, Phoenixville and the railways have had an important relationship. Many of the actual rails used to complete the Philadelphia Reading Railroad were produced by the Phoenix Iron Company, and the legislation to incorporate the Philadelphia and Reading Railroad Company was introduced by Phoenixville's state representative, Elijah F. Pennypacker, a well-known abolitionist and champion of the public transportation and education. By 1871, the Philadelphia and Reading Railroad was the largest company in the world, with a gross value of over $170 million, or $3.5 trillion by today's standards. The driving force behind the formation of the Philadelphia and Reading Railroad was to move anthracite coal from northeastern Pennsylvania to Reading, Phoenixville, and Philadelphia. Anthracite was a hard coal which was a game changer in the manufacturing industry as it burned longer and allowed the iron furnaces to get hotter producing a higher quality product. Through the continuous supply of anthracite coal and Phoenix Iron Company's commitment to innovation and patents on the Griffin Gun and Phoenix Column, Phoenixville's economy boomed so came a need for labor. Once again, the railroad played a key role in fueling not only the furnaces of the Phoenix Iron Company but also fueling its need for laborers. The Phoenix Iron Company set up a sales office on Walnut Street in Philadelphia and even sent agents to the ports of Philadelphia so as new immigrants came off the boats from Ireland, Germany, Italy, Hungary, Poland, and Slovakia, they would be recruited and put onto the train to Phoenixville to begin working for the Phoenix Iron Company. From the Civil War through Vietnam, Phoenixville and its railroad station played key roles. In the Civil War, it was the movement of troops and delivery of over 1,200 Griffin guns to the Union Army. Members of the Ladies' Aid Society, which met on the 200 block of Bridge Street, even used the railroads to deliver food, socks, and mittens to Phoenixville soldiers on the battlefields. For World War II, the Korean War, and Vietnam, the railroad brought injured troops from all over the country to Phoenixville for transport to the Valley Forge Military Hospital, which is one of the largest military hospitals on the East Coast. We know at least 11 U.S. presidents have passed through the Phoenixville station with two stopping. Teddy Roosevelt, one of my favorite presidents, to make a speech and Chester Arthur to stay overnight. In more modern times, the railway was part of everyday life in Phoenixville, taking people to work, into the city for Phillies games, and for many children, a train ride into the city served as the opening to the Christmas holiday, as they went to see the lights and show in the Wanamaker building. But in 1981, just shy of 150 years of rail service in Phoenixville, the hollowed halls of the Columbia Station fell silent. And around the same time, the Phoenix Iron Company ceased operations. And without Phoenixville's access to transportation and economic driver, our future looked uncertain.